it is I. So, um, today is Sunday. It's the uh, 29th of March, um, 2020. Um, I am now back from a 34 hour restart. I put a, put a video up last night talking about a 34 hour restart, blah, blah, blah. I'm back from a 34 hour restart. Um, I was able to uh, get that in. There wasn't anything to do because so I was stuck at home the entire time. Um, so that being the case, I'm trying to figure out where the, my biggest problem is I'm always trying to figure out where the camera is. Is it this one? That, there it is. Okay. All right. Now I know which dot to look at. Um, anyway, the, uh, I'm always looking at my face as I look at the dot. Maybe you look at the dot. Anyway. Um, so I am, uh, back from that and everything. There wasn't really anything to do. Of course, everything's closed. Can't go out to eat. Can't do anything. Blah, blah, blah. Um, so, uh, went home. I watched a movie. Uh, I did get out, actually. Um, I bought a car. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna put the, uh, the video. I took a video of the car. I took a picture of the car and, uh, and everything. I wanted a car I could leave at the yard. And everything I've got, um, I'm not comfortable with leaving at the yard. Now, all, this, all my stuff is, is, is POS, okay? My nicest car is my Caprice, or was. Um, it was a very nice car. My worst car is probably my 90 van. And the 90 van I bought for 600 bucks. Uh, and it's been incredibly reliable for being that it was $600. So, um, I'm gonna try to put the video in of the new car I just bought. Uh, it's a 1994 Mercedes. <laughs> Mom's leaving. Hey, that's enough. Sit down. Okay. It's a 1994 uh, Mercedes C280. It's in uh, British Racing Green, I'm pretty sure. Um, and uh, it was uh, my uncle's car. And uh, he had it, uh, but it's been really problematic for him. And uh, very expensive, and he got tired of it. Uh, it's probably not going to be any better for me, <laughs> in all honesty. But I wanted something I could leave in the yard and not worry about getting stolen that would just get me around when I am when I come to the yard. So generally, if I'm going to do a 34, if I have an empty trailer, what I'll do is I'll, I'll set the trailer down in the yard and I'll take my big truck and I'll go down and get my pickup truck or my Caprice or whatever. And then I'll go do what I want to do. Um, the, uh, the problem sometimes is that my trailer's loaded with, like right now, 32,000 pounds worth of stuff. So... Uh, and it's a lot of work to go from from where I'm at all the way to Waxahachie. From forward to Waxahachie, that's 30 minutes. And then, you know, I gotta let the, the truck cool down. That's 15 minutes letting the truck cool down before I can shut it off. So, and then uh, I gotta get all my stuff out of the truck, put it in my car, or whatever car I'm deciding to drive at that point. And then I gotta drive an hour back home. So it takes about two hours to do that. Um, and that's two hours out of my day. Um, from where I'm at now, where the yard is to the house, it's about um, 20 minutes or so. So if I could come here, park the truck, get my stuff out and go home, it's actually a lot less time. Uh, but that requires me to leave the truck here. In this case, I, I generally am not gonna leave the truck here. And the reason for that is because um, if I'm gonna be home and I can take the truck somewhere and park it and it'd be safe, I'd rather, rather do that. But in this case, I have 32,000 pounds on the, in the box, which means I weigh somewhere around, uh, let's see, 35 and 32 is what, 67? So I weigh 67,000 pounds. Um, the yard that we're in can be soft, especially after it rains, and we've had some trouble with trailers sinking into the ground. Uh, so I try not to drop a trailer here. That being the case, um, in this case, I had to leave it behind. Well, there's not a car here for me to drive, so, um, I have to get a ride from somebody. My mother usually comes and picks me up and takes me back to the house. Uh, when that happens, it's just, it's a lot for somebody else to do. And I don't really like to rely on somebody else to do that. I need to be self-sufficient. And that's kind of the thing. So, uh, my uncle was having some problems, uh, had some problems with this Mercedes and he was looking to unload it anyway. And I'm looking for something that I don't really care about. And, uh, it actually... It's not that great of a car. I put a Facebook uh, a picture of it up on my Facebook page, and everybody's like, "Wow, this looks really good. I think you did good. You better go." It's like, no, you don't understand. Like, this is not that nice. So, um, I'll, I took a video earlier of it uh, so you guys can see it, and I'll put that up now. I'm trying to tell you guys about how bad this car actually is. So look, 
sunroof, right? All the paint peeling off, coming off. Okay. Interior's not bad. Hold on, I'll show you that. The other side's the worst. She's cracking right here. That's probably Bondo or rust underneath it. Uh, there is a hole right here. And then uh, door dings along the side. Paint's coming off right here. You know, uh, there was uh, one point that it was taped down. There was a thing over the windshield taped down. But, <clears throat> hold on a second. Check this out. If you turn the key, it unlocks that door and that door. Should, well, okay, hold on. When you turn it again, and it rolls all of the windows down. Okay, so interior. Back seat's not bad. Carpet's kind of nice. Front is not too bad. Everything. Dash is kind of torn apart or whatever. Um, it is dirty. But hey, for a thousand dollars. I only had a water leak over there at one point, and then, like this whole side, all the way to the back, would fill up with water. So that floor is probably bad at some point. Anyway, yep. Yeah. Uh, hold on. Okay, so saw the interior. <clears throat> Start it. Starts up. Check engine light. Don't know what for. It's an OBD1 system, so. Oh. Let's see. The, uh, this is the, um, AC system that doesn't work. We're gonna turn it on to heat. Because it's kind of cold outside. The one. This light doesn't work. This light does. But only when the door's open. The back light works. Okay. Now that light works. Back light works. Okay. Sunroof. Oh. The sun. And. We're going to McDonald's to get food. Because there's no breakfast in the house. Or I'm going to McDonald's to get food. Oh, it leaks transmission fluid too, so it likes to slip in first if it's low. But it's floored. Whee! Floor it. Let's do it. Breathe. Yeah, okay, I'm good. So that's it. Uh, that's what I did. I did take that car. It's got a transmission leak. I did take that car down yesterday to look at blue bonnets because I've been in the truck now for about three weeks or so. Um, pretty, you know, every night three weeks, and it was nice to kind of get out of the car, out of the truck, kind of get out into the countryside um, and off the interstates and off the, the U.S. highways and off the main, you know, farm to market roads in Texas and everything, and kind of just get out and kind of explore a little bit. So that's what we did uh, yesterday. Mom went with me because she's been cooped up in the house for like two weeks as well. So. Um, anyway, uh, that's pretty much it. That was what my 34 was. So I figured I'd share that with you guys. And then uh, today is just going to be about going to um, Arkansas. I got seven drops on this load. Uh, it is an essential load. I'm going to try to take a picture of this and, and share it with you guys later. Um, but it is an essential load. I have a, a little note from who I'm hauling from that says it's an essential load. Cultural, uh, critical infrastructure load. Um, so I may or may not use the hours of service rules in that case. I don't think I'm going to have to. So uh, I think it really boils down to farmers don't work on Sunday. And um, and if they do, most of the businesses that they associate with are not open on Sunday. Um, so, and the first appointment was tomorrow morning. And starting tomorrow, I'll go up there tonight and then I'll spend the night. And then starting tomorrow, depending on how soon everybody needs their stuff, and I'll call them tomorrow and ask, I may go into the hours of service exception to deliver the stuff. Um, but at this point, I'm probably not going to do that because I don't see the need to. Um, anyway, that's it. Uh, get ready to do my finish my pre-trip up here for the paperwork. I've already done the pre-trip, checked around, and uh, get moving. So um, I'll probably add a little something this, tonight to this. So I'll see you tonight. All right. Better. Okay. 
just so you know, the uh, rumbling that you heard earlier in the first part of the video was from the uh, AC vent blowing on the phone back here where the microphone is. Um, so I didn't realize it was blowing that hard on it. I apologize. Nothing I can do about it now. I filmed it earlier. Uh, anyway, I gotta say, um, I'm a little bummed tonight. So, uh, I found out Joe Diffie died. Uh, Joe Diffie, if you follow country music at all, was a country music star from the early to mid 90s. He did good songs like Pickup Man and, um, John Deere Green and, and just, just ridiculous stuff that, you, you know, you listen to it now and you're just like, oh my god! That's what passed for music back in the 90s. And yes, that is what passed for music back in the 90s. I enjoyed it very much. So did a lot of other people. Um, he died of coronavirus today. And uh, he was 61 years old. So, you know, I was listening to the news. And, and it'll get you down. It'll get you depressed. And I kind of understand that. But um, I like to stay informed about what's going on. And, um, you know, they're talking about, was it 3.4 million people, uh, filed for unemployment last week. Um, we may go to 15%. That's conservative. They're talking more about like, you know, uh, the ridiculous, most far out number they could get is 30% unemployment, um, which is unheard of in this country. Um, so I don't know. Um, uh, right now it seems that, um, I did find out today that we're, we're going to have to do another 30 days of social distancing. So it's 30 more days of everything that, that we've been doing now, like I've said, it, I don't know that it's really affecting us that, that badly. Um, it is, you go into, it's the same thing as always. You go into a place to, to get somebody to eat. You can't eat in there. You got to take it back to your truck, you know, um, I'm thankful for places like Pilot. I stopped at a Pilot today and got some uh, some uh, roasted chicken and uh, some green beans and macaroni and cheese. It was real nice. So um, that was, you know, that's kind of what we're dealing with. I got to say, stay home, please. You know, another 30 days is, is only, it's only going to be 30 days if, if everybody stays home. I can't stay home, obviously, um, but I am going to stay home is in my truck, you know, uh, as much as possible and only go out when necessary. Uh, it's a little, uh, nerve wracking. It's a little concerning because it'd be nice to, to kind of get out and go sit in a restaurant and, 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 uh, talk to other people and, and chit chat and everything, but I'll have to live with what I've got. Um, so stay home, please. Uh, don't go out, practice your social distancing. Uh, and the other thing is, um, I had a friend that, said she was feeling really lonely and uh, wanted people to remember you know that not everybody's handling it well if you feel that way please reach out to somebody call somebody uh, text somebody and, and tell them you know I know a lot of us grew up uh, being told that our emotions didn't count our, our emotions didn't matter um, so but they do they, they really do if you're feeling lonely if you're feeling uh, like you need to reach out to somebody reach out find somebody uh, even if it's just a random person online somewhere, do that. But but stay home, practice social distancing, and uh, let's get through this. But another 30 days, that's going to be a lot. There's going to be a lot of changes. So um, just hunker down, try to do what you can. I'm going to try to do what I can. Anyway, that's it. Uh, not much left to say. I'm going to go tomorrow and drop off. Uh, I am going to be passing through Jonesboro, Arkansas. They had a tornado today. Found that out earlier as well. Um, so... My heart goes out to everybody in Jonesboro, Arkansas right now with uh, with what they're dealing with. And, uh, you know, just just know that I'm, I don't want to go through Jonesboro, Arkansas. And, uh, but I have to, to get to my next drop tomorrow. So, um, just, just kind of, I hope it's not as bad as, as it could have been. Anyway, that's it. Keep trying to sign up. See you guys down the road. See you tomorrow.